This is CBN News Watch. Thank you so much for joining us on this Good Friday, April 2nd, 2021. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, new details emerging about a deadly shooting in California. We're sharing what we know now about the gunman. An infrastructure plan with a hefty price tag. See why the president says it's what America needs. Preparing for Easter in the midst of a pandemic. We're exploring if churches will be able to open their doors for Resurrection Sunday. And a musical with a Christian focus. See the story that's trending high on a major streaming platform. All those stories and more are ahead in this edition of CBN Newswatch. We begin this half hour in Southern California where we're learning more about the gunman accused of killing four people and critically wounding a fifth at an office building. Police say he knew the victims. And before he opened fire, he shut the entrance gates, delaying officers' ability to get inside. One of the victims was a nine-year-old boy in the arms of a woman believed to be his mother, who is the only survivor of that deadly attack. The White House calls it a common sense plan and lawmakers are now considering the multi-trillion dollar infrastructure proposal the president laid out on Thursday. It is extremely expensive, but President Biden says he knows how to pay for it. CBN White House correspondent Eric Phillips has the details. Today I'm announcing that I'm asking five cabinet members to take special responsibility to explain the plan to the American public. The first Biden administration cabinet meeting happening just hours after his big speech on infrastructure. It's a once in a generation investment in America. In blue collar Pittsburgh, the president made his pitch for the American jobs plan. I'll begin with the heart of the plan. It modernizes transportation infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, our airports. Key items include replacing lead piping across the country, 5,000 charging stations for electric cars, improving the nation's power grid, and a focus on research and development. Markets like battery technology, biotechnology, computer chips, clean energy, a competition with China in particular. In the process, the president says, putting Americans to work on good paying jobs. Not a contract will go out that I control that will not go to a company that is an American company with American products all the way down the line and American workers. The price tag, about $2 trillion spread over eight years. The Biden payment plan tax increases for those making more than $400,000 a year, as well as businesses. We're going to raise the corporate tax. No one should be able to complain about that. It's still lower than what that rate was between World War II and 2017. The president also wants to close loopholes that allow Fortune 500 companies to escape paying taxes and eliminate deductions for corporations that take jobs overseas. It's honest. It's fiscally responsible. And it really is not an honest conversation we're having about what this proposal is. South Carolina Governor Kristi Noem said she's taken part in a call with governors from around the country about the president's proposal. And I was shocked by how much doesn't go into infrastructure. It goes into research and development. It goes into housing and pipes and different initiatives, green energy. And we're going to be back here a couple of years from now uh, wishing that we weren't uh, in a situation where people had less money. In 50 years, people are going to look back and say, this was the moment that America won the future. In Washington, Eric Phillips, CBN News. The Red Cross is in the disaster response business, and while there's no shortage of work, the response can be even more challenging during a global pandemic. As Caitlin Burke shows us, the Red Cross has had to change, like the rest of the world, to respond to struggling families virtually. From large-scale natural disasters like hurricanes or wildfires to smaller emergencies, Red Cross volunteers are often among the first on the scene joining state, local, and federal authorities to provide support. We work with all of those agencies to set up a family assistance center where the families of those who uh, died during the event are able to come and access resources from a number of different organizations. When the scope of this pandemic became apparent, folks at the Red Cross realized this type of mass casualty event would require a new approach. 
we set up what we were calling our virtual family assistance center on a website by inviting many different agencies to join us on that website to let people know what services they offer, what resources they have. Rather than sending volunteers to physical locations, they deployed virtually. Because normally in a family assistance center, we would have mental health and spiritual care and health services volunteers working directly with the clients. Because of the pandemic, we can't do that. So we have a call center. Good morning. This is the Red Cross Virtual Family Assistance Center. How may I help you? Spiritual care is the specialty of volunteer Linda Rainey. So spiritual care for uh, the Red Cross is not um, based on any religion or denomination. For us, spiritual care really is about um care and compassion for the people. The Red Cross, our mission is to alleviate suffering in people who have been affected by a disaster or by an emergency. And that's what we're doing. Over the last year, just about every call seems connected to the pandemic. People call in asking for all sorts of things. Um, they ask for help designing funerals or memorial services. Many people are looking for financial resources. The pandemic led to the creation of the Virtual Family Care Center, but it will continue even after the U.S. is no longer in COVID's grip. We feel that there will continue to be a need for a place where people can go to get both that emotional support and some access to resources. And the virtual model allows the Red Cross to respond within seconds. We can scale up. We can add people to the call center if we start getting lots and lots of calls. Um, we can pivot to being a more local or regionally based site. During a time when safety seems synonymous with isolation, the Red Cross wants you to know you're not alone and their volunteers want to hear your story. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. I am region's first ROTC graduate student. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers. But even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. It's looking like Easter could be much different this year as more people get vaccinated. Many church leaders hope to safely reopen for Resurrection Sunday services. Charlene Aaron brings us this story. In 2020, many churches closed doors and moved to virtual services as COVID-19 forced churchgoers to celebrate Easter through computer screens and mobile phones. 
This year, with more Americans getting the vaccine, a growing number want to return to worshiping together. We're doing a lot of services to accommodate all of the space um, and, still, and still doing all of the spacing and the masking that's being asked and required um, to make sure that it's a safe experience, but yet, yet people still can worship the Lord together. In California, however, there are still restrictions, and one pastor is pleading with Governor Gavin Newsom to fully reopen churches ahead of Easter Sunday. Several churches sued over extreme restrictions banning in-person services. Then the Supreme Court stepped in to offer some relief. In a video, Pastor Jack Treber of Santa Clara's North Valley Baptist Church says enough is enough. We have a 3,000-seat auditorium that sits empty. Governor Newsom, I implore you to open up our churches by Easter Sunday, April the 4th. We've been obeying for 366 days, one year and one day. We have had zero deaths in our church of thousands of people. We've had zero hospitalizations. Thanks to the rollout of the COVID vaccine, Americans are ready to head back to church. According to a Pew Research study, roughly four in 10 plan to attend Easter services in person this year. Most people who are comfortable with coming back have come back and we're expecting as the numbers have continually gone down and people um, are getting vaccinated, people are more comfortable. Uh, we're expecting people to start coming back. Not everyone agrees. Pastor Siobhan Smith and her husband lead New Generation Church in Berlin, New Jersey. Like most congregations, they took their services online when the pandemic hit, then moved back inside with a 25% capacity and other safety precautions. When New Jersey lifted restrictions, the church hosted an anniversary celebration, a move Pastor Smith now regrets. Church was full. Following the service on Sunday, we're starting to feel, you know, uh, feeling a little flu symptoms. You know, some coughing, some got headaches, some have fever. My son tested positive. My husband tested positive. My daughter tested positive. Every day, we're still getting reports, tested positive. The musician tested positive. One of the praise and worship leaders tested positive. For that reason, Pastor Smith says their planned Easter service is on hold. Now, since this has happened, um, you know, with me and my husband dialoguing, I think we're going to have to have a virtual Resurrection Sunday service. Our viewership online has skyrocketed, um, and, and that's been the case for most churches. And so we've, we've really put a lot of effort into making sure that we have a good online experience. We've really done everything that we can to meet people and disciple people where they are and where they feel comfortable, to be honest. Still, whether in person or online, those we talked with agree that sharing the message of Easter is what's most important. Yes, there is a big emphasis on Easter, um, but we're not just after the regular people who have been coming, coming back. We're after the people who don't know him to come in and experience him. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Still ahead, the women and men gear up for the final four of the NCAA. The historic moments we can look forward to are coming up. Stay with us. Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how 
along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. Only a few teams remain standing in the NCAA championship. March Madness now officially in the final four. Joining us to talk about tomorrow's game and the history-making moments is CBN Sports Director Sean Brown. So, Sean, tonight is all about the women, and Don Staley and Adia Barnes will make history as the first black head coaches in the final four for women's basketball. What have they had to say about this moment? Hey, good morning, Ephraim. Yes, uh, hey, it was just such a fantastic moment to have two African-American coaches coaching at the same time in a Final Four. Um, Don Staley just commented that, hey, man, you know, so many years have gone by where there's so many African-American coaches um, that are that can coach and they're being overlooked. And so now to have two African-American coaches uh, coaching in this Final Four for the first time in history, at the again, at the same time, um, is just monumental. And uh, for those ADs that have overlooked uh, African-American coaches and, and coaches of color, uh, well, they need to look tonight. They need to look tonight to see both Adia and uh, Don Staley coach tonight. Beautiful so, to uh, see. And, of course, Adia looks up to um, to Don because she's a little, a little more seasoned. Yeah. Uh, but just going to be uh, just classic matchups tonight. Love it. Now, for the men, tomorrow afternoon is certainly going to be busy, so break it down for us. Who's playing and when? Well, hey, uh, again, exciting, exciting. Uh, Baylor has Houston at 514. Gonzaga has UCLA at 834. You got two number one seeds, a two seed, and an 11 seed. Gonzaga, Baylor, number one seeds. Houston, a two seed. UCLA, an 11 seed. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Tomorrow night. Uh, very exciting. And you've got two series, the women's and the men's basketball. I didn't say the women's times, but 6 p.m. tonight, South Carolina and Stanford, 930, Arizona. UConn tonight is the women's as well. And so just an exciting time of basketball. Indeed. Any prediction on which teams will earn the championship title? You know what? Uh, at least for the men's, uh, Gonzaga has been really, really consistent. I, I can't ignore uh, what they've been able to pull together. Um, I mean, how are you going to stop Drew Timmy, Jalen Suggs, Corey Kisper? How are you going to stop those guys? Um, but UCLA has been able to shoot well over the last couple of games. And so we'll have to see how that matchup goes. But I'm going Gonzaga all the way. It would be great if it's Gonzaga-Baylor in the championship game, mm -hmm. two number one seeds. But you can't rule out the, uh, the, the uh, underdog in, in UCLA. But I'm going Gonzaga. Indeed, go Gonzaga. indeed. Before we let you go, UNC basketball coach Roy Williams is retiring. What's been the reaction to the news? He is a legend, Ephraim. I have seen him coach in Final Fours. He is a legend. He really, really uh, just has all of, the, all of the things that you would look for in a head coach. Um, just the utmost respect across college basketball, um, and I just salute his his career. Um, we, he he will be missed. Um, you know, I've been in several Final Fours, and just to see him uh, coach his guys uh, is is phenomenal. And so, just a uh, just a surrounding amount of love um, and respect towards uh, Coach Roy. Indeed, it is a busy weekend for you as well, Sean. Thank you so much. We will see you next week. You got it. Coming up, a Christian-based musical getting great reviews straight ahead. We're going to speak to the actors behind the movie a week away. Stay with us. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today.
welcome to Studio 5 Uncut. This is our opportunity to share extended conversations with some of the great guests we've had on Studio 5. You can't go anywhere on the planet and not see the impact of gospel music on popular culture. Now you're a comedian and a Christian. You know, why is that such a baffle? Being an artist who is Christian, an artist who is in hip hop culture, I'm trying to find my own sound. Studio 5 Uncut, next. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream. The chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities. The chance to stand on the promises of God. To recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? This Easter season, celebrate our risen Savior with your CBN family. Join us on the CBN Family app for a virtual communion with Pat, special Easter teachings from Gordon, and more Holy Week reflections and services. Bake a springtime favorite with Wendy and watch Terry share the meaning of Easter with her family. Don't miss this special time of celebration on CBN Family. Welcome back to CBN News Watch. The first faith-based musical streaming on Netflix is getting rave reviews. A week away debuted in the top five in its first weekend. We chatted with the film's stars who share what inspired them to take part in this production. Here's Will Hawkins' file. Social services put everything in there. You didn't tell me this was church camp. It's gonna be great. What's with the name, a Ouija way? A Ouija way. Every once in a while, somebody's just a week away from an experience that changed everything for them. You hear it, you hear it, you hear it too. I'm Avery. <laughs> nice to meet you. What's her story? Way out of your league, trust me. Her dad owns the place. If I'm gonna fit in here, I have to be something I'm not. Well, this will be fun. Good luck, Will. You're gonna need it. Kevin, what do you most like about this storyline and your character, Will? Tell me a little bit about him. There's just so many layers and you just see so many different sides of Will that are so beautiful and so vulnerable. Uh, so being able to portray that character was just really humbling for me. Did you like him? I liked him a lot. I mean, <laughs> I feel like he was a relatively likable guy. Um, I guess Avery liked him uh, quite a bit. <laughs> Bailey, tell me about your character and your thoughts on joining this project. Well, I play Avery and, and she's the camp counselor. So, you know, he runs the camp, her to his daughter. And, uh, you know, I think she's one of the first people who really, really takes to Will and sees him for, um, for him. And I think maybe before he even can recognize those qualities about him, she, uh, she sees through the pain and, and the mistakes. And I think she, uh, she, can, she can see his heart at the end of the day, which I love. If the two of you just would talk. Seriously, dude, you just gotta talk to her. Yeah. Tell me about your character and what you like most about it. George in, George and I are definitely kindred spirits. I, I definitely see a lot of myself in George as like being super passionate and like one could say nerdy, um, but feeling like he hasn't had really found the like, you know, his, the, his, his people, his, his tribe to like really like embrace him for who he is. Can't help but wonder if I'm good enough. Kat, tell us about who you are playing and what you like about her. So I play Presley and I I love everything about Presley. Um, I'd say I'd say I like her in some ways, but I love I love that she's quirky. I like that they're shown in like a positive light and that like it's not like, oh well these are kinda like our loser characters and we're gonna have them change to become cooler. Like no, like they're quirky, but like they're loved and accepted the whole time. Jabril, why is it important for characters uh, like the two of you to be seen um, and, and celebrated on screen? Hopefully it'll be super empowering for, for kids these days 
to see um, to see that and know that it's it's not something to be ashamed of having you know weird nerdy specific interests. Singing too much, I couldn't decide. No, no, thing. no, that's what got me. Oh, the singing? Tell me about your favorite parts of the, of the music story here. The CCM hits were an imperative part of the script, I know, for the writers uh, and the producers. And, you know, getting cameos from Stephen Curtis Chapman, Amy Grant, and getting them on board with our reimagined versions of the song uh, was just the coolest thing. It's harder than it seems, feels like. I mean, I grew up listening to these kind of songs. I grew up in a really like faith-filled household and uh, and we love music and we love worship. So <laughs> and so many of these songs I grew up listening to for my older siblings and my mom, uh, it all felt very, very full circle and so, so, so gratifying. But their, their songs have changed the lives of so many people. And the idea of us being able to reimagine it and then letting us take take that chance and run with it um, in hopes of reintroducing these messages and these songs to a new generation. Mm -hmm. uh, you could feel that energy on set every day. So uh, it was really special. If there are millions down on their knees among the many I love the idea that um, an entire family could sit down and enjoy this movie and watch it together. Um, that's like the, the best feeling in the world to get to be a part of something like that. We're so thrilled about the partnership with Netflix and I think I'd much rather have people streaming it as many times as they can as opposed to walking to the movie theater every time they want to see it, have to buy a ticket. It's a consumable movie. Uh, and with everything that's going on right now, the timing is just super relevant. So if anything, I hope it brings joy to all the viewers. I'm like trying to be what everybody expects me to be. It is exhausting. I totally get it. I think the hope of this movie was that um, it didn't feel like we were we were letting anyone not be able to see this film or, or projecting a message that that, that basically said, hey, if you have faith, like your life is great and you're perfect. And, uh, <laughs> that's not the reality of it. And I'm a very faith-based person. So uh, to get to have, you know, a, a teenage character be very vocal in the fact of like, hey, I don't have it figured out, but I'm trying. And I'm like, I'm doing the best that I can every day. I think we all need to start having those conversations more within each other, especially right now when we're all facing such a weird time. Your parents would be really proud of you. With that, it's time for your Friday Faithful. And on this Good Friday, I leave you with this thought, borrowed from the lyrics of a gospel tune you're sure to hear in churches this season. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. The song goes on to say, they hung him high and stretched him wide. He hung his head and for me he died. That's love. But that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. That's love. And with that, have a wonderful Good Friday and a wonderful weekend as well. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel at any time. You can also find them online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think of the stories you've seen here today. You can email us the address, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We would love to hear from you. Again, make this a fabulous Resurrection Weekend, and we'll see you right back here same time come Monday. Goodbye, everybody. God bless, and thank you so much for watching.